my name is Del Deaton. I'm author creator of JamesBondWatches.com and guest curator for Bond Watches, James Bond Watches at the National Watch and Clock Museum in Columbia, Pennsylvania. In support of my friends with Exhibitor Publications and the American Marketing Association, we're here to take a closer look at the design concept and layout work that went into putting together this first class exhibit. We're going to take a look at this information on the wall behind me. Our space is approximately 45 feet long by 16 feet wide. It's an angular wall on the one side. It's a uh, straight wall on the other with a single entrance for security reasons. When we came in, we decided that we were going to paint the walls a slate gray to give them a neutral sort of a um, Cold War Berlin Wall feel. We created two aisles by forming a center of kiosks. And these product kiosks were tall, clear, but with low displays. It gave the impression of an uh, exhibition back to a um, watch case. So you'd look from the front toward the back, which is the climax of the exhibit. When we began organizing exhibit properties, one of the things we wanted to do was to encourage a traffic flow in a clockwise direction. In order to facilitate that, what we did was we put wall graphics and major uh, film-related watches in this area. So you would come in, you would see the Hamilton Pulsar, the Rolex watches, the Breitling, the Seiko line through the center, Hoyer, Tag Hoyer in this direction, and then finally here, uh, the Omega line with bright light boxes uh, flanking on either side. Serving us both in terms of security and drama, the back area of the exhibit is the um, Ian Fleming watch, the most famous James Bond watch in the world, as we say. It's in a high security case. It's around the corner from the Omega watches that I had just mentioned. Again, you see it uh, as the uh, Seiko line ends here with the sort of a look through in this area. We also have the Bond manuscripts here, original uh, Ian Fleming correspondence here, author's first copies. We have first edition publications of um, James Bond stories. Beyond the hor horological sense, which is to say the history of the development of the technology of timekeeping on the wrist, also there is James Bond as it is a tool of Ian Fleming himself, the storyteller. We get into the branding area, and one of the things that's important to understand about Ian Fleming is that he was as skilled a marketer as he was a storyteller. Returning then to the main entry area here, we terminate with the Casino Royale Limited Edition. Again, it's an Omega watch. Uh, 5,007 of these were made. This is uh, number 1113 of that series. All the packaging, all of the things surrounding it. Uh, the idea is it gives you a sense of what it really means to elaborately and extensively collect James Bond watches. Finally, as an exhibit that was going to run a full year, from uh, June, mid-June of 2010 all the way through uh, the end of April 2011, we had to keep in mind that this exhibit space had to be both have an intimate feeling to it when there were only a few people going through it, let's say on a typical weekday when the museum was open, vacation traveler to the area or a local, all the way through the big parties like the um, Bond Enthusiast Weekend that we have coming up uh, at the end of this week.